All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Perhaps. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Betcha. You're my friend. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Here we go. Anything? Nope. But Stanley <sighs> just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during yeah, work hours. He might be would have been much worse that. than what's about to and happen. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. That's and then true. something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All Bible of my co workers option. blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began I'm to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet? That's when awesome. He looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever this he went? This is cool. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. You're crazy. I'm dreaming, he yelled. There this is go. all a dream. Oh, what a relief. Better pinch Stanley yourself. Felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy. I don't know why I'm all. still walking through these. He thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up Something soon. Something to do. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Shit. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked Narrator? himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my <laughs> yeah. head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice trippy. was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself. I made stars Stanley show up. As awake did right you? Now, as he's ever been in his life. Shit. Now hearing the voice speak these words was Damn. quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? That's what How I said. How else would the voice explain all that? He'd... This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. How so? So he closed his eyes gently. And he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. It's the best we can hope for ourselves. Shit!
Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be He's real. So I must much be. Worse. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. It's a roller coaster of emotions. This is the story of a woman named Mary. Excuse me? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her Shh. place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. Wow. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. That looks crazy. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. So you think it was it's your perception of what you believe. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. But we won't animate it. Wow. All of his mm. co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the I meeting I think it's finally time Mr. Memo. we listen to everything he says. Because that's got to be an when ending. Stanley came to a to set of two do what he doors, says. He entered the door on his left. So let's just run past the first bit, I suppose. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer. Player one has come back, eh? Eh? Anyone? First episode? Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication oh, I of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age bitch. music. This is a very clever game. I don't know how many endings there are, how much replayability it has, but just playing Feeling through it. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly yes. walked forward into the opened passageway. Yes. you now. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Alrighty. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Oh. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Am I being controlled by the narrator? To find or someone out? else? Now the monitors jump to life. They're true. That's everyone who works here. Each bore the number of an employee. One of my four Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to seven. images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Wow. It's dark when you really think about it. 
Everything has been predetermined this for mind you. control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Yes. No. He refused to believe it. He That's couldn't true. accept it. His own life in someone else's right. control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? I hope not. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. That's right. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay. System power? Oh. Uh, I mean, off, right? Yes. Go on. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Yeah. Was it over? something? It's not pitch black. Yes. Whoa. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. I hope. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. Really? For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, He's his own man. what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. This is your life. And Stanley was happy. Oh. That was a good ending. That probably was the good ending. 